Hey guys, welcome to this week's FAQ in Freebie Friday. Now, if you're new to our channel, these videos are all about answering your health-related questions. So if you have a question concerning your health, health in general, Chinese medicine, herbalism, nutritional supplements, diet, etc., and you would like our help in answering those questions, all you need to do is leave your question in the comment section below, and we'll be answering those based on popularity, the questions that we feel be most beneficial to our community as a whole, and of course, the questions that we are capable of answering. Now, something else really great about these videos is that every week from that comment section, we select one lucky person to win a free bag of tonic herbs or medicinal mushrooms. So even if you don't have a health question for us this week, but you're interested in winning some free herbs or mushrooms, all you need to do to be entered to win is simply give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, and then just drop any old comment in the comment section below. And with all that being said, let's get to this week's questions. All right, so getting to our first question, this question reads, does TCM or any other medical tradition that you're aware of have an effective way to address hearing loss and or tinnitus? So yes, both traditional Chinese medicine and even modern Western medicine has various remedies for treating tinnitus. Now, the first thing I'll just say is that if you haven't yet, we actually already made an entire video dedicated to this particular topic where I go into depth and talk about the TCM point of view, as well as the general pathology of tinnitus and some things that you can do to correct it. So be sure to definitely watch that video. Otherwise, some basic things to consider to take into mind is that from the more pharmacological perspective, the basic drugs or pharmaceuticals that are used to treat things like tinnitus and hearing loss are actually drugs that ultimately increase the inner ear tissue metabolism, as well as increasing the general blood supply to the ear tissue and throughout the whole body. And this is because the basic pathology of tinnitus is that the inner ear tissue is actually inflamed or even breaking down. And whenever there is tissue damage, then capillary leakiness can occur. So fluids can get into the eardrum, for example, and this is where you hear the ringing in tinnitus. And again, the basic thing that causes usually the leakiness of a tissue, just like gut leakiness, is some sort of inflammation. But this inflammation is oftentimes preceded by stress. So looking now at the more TCM point of view, they look at tinnitus as a symptom of both a Jing essence deficiency, which is another way of saying it's a stress issue. Your adrenal glands are being overly stimulated or hyperactive and your body's overproducing glucocorticoids and stress hormones like cortisol. And this is actually gonna catabolize the ear tissue. It can actually cause gut leakiness as well. High levels of cortisol is one of the major contributing factors to leaky gut and the leakiness of any tissue because it's catabolistic and damaging. So excessive levels of cortisol as seen in like hyperadrenalism where the jing is being depleted through stress can increase the production of these catabolistic stress hormones that can waste various precious tissues in the body like the intestines, the skin tissue, and in this case, the inner ear tissue. So really what's going on is some sort of damage is being done to the tissue, which is why pharmaceuticals that increase the inner ear tissue metabolism, so that way the tissue can regenerate, are oftentimes effective. However, one of the other underlying issues in the TCM point of view and the more Western point of view is inflammation. And usually stress and inflammation go hand in hand because when the body's overly stressed, the cell can't produce enough energy, as much energy as it's using up. So this creates an inflammatory response ultimately or oxidative stress. So there's tons of things that could be contributing to it. Ultimately stress in the most broad range sense of things is gonna cause most issues because the stress hormones break down the body cause oxidative stress and inflammation. But there could be tons of stressors that are contributing to it. It could be the stress of aging, but normally in today's age, it's because the modern environment, the modern diet, all these things, drinking, the use of harsh pharmaceuticals, all these things combined usually accelerate stress or create a compound amount of stress that accelerates the aging process and the degeneration of the body. And then if you look at inflammation, Tons of things can cause inflammation. There's a lot of confusion though about what causes inflammation because not many people look at what inflammation actually is. So definitely watch the video that I made on inflammation and get some tips there because anything that's ultimately gonna lower stress and lower inflammation will help protect the inner ear tissue from 
basically catabolizing and becoming damaged, leading to that capillary leakiness. But looking at some practical tips from TCM, the use of vasodilating sort of herbs, so like ginkgo biloba is often used. And there's actually a traditional Chinese medicine herbal formula that has like a 96% success rate in clinical trials to treat tinnitus. And it's a combination of a bunch of different herbs. I'll link it somewhere beneath this video, but it often contains herbs like gentian root, which is one of the major herbs in Chinese bitters, which handles the inflammation or the liver heat uprising, which is another way of saying that the liver is overly stressed and the liver is experiencing inflammation or the body is. So Chinese bitters are often a part of that formula and really good for treating inflammation or the liver heat rising that can contribute to tinnitus. And then other herbs like Donggui are often seen in that formula, as well as Jing tonifying herbs, so herbs like Romagna or licorice root. So a combination of those herbs, again being Chinese bitters, Romagna, Donggui, might be an effective strategy. You kind of make your own herbal formula. Again, this is ultimately correcting the inflammation involved, the blood deficiency that's usually involved, and even the stress deficiency. Romania is great for handling the stress and making sure that the kidneys are not being overly stimulated. So those are all good herbs to look into supplementing with, and then otherwise doing anything you can to reduce total stress and lower the excess production of glucocorticoids would be an effective holistic solution, as well as doing anything to reduce total inflammation. So again, definitely watch the resources on the video on tinnitus in of itself. Watch any of the videos we have on lowering cortisol and stress hormones, and watch any of the videos that we have on reducing inflammation. And then of course there's these other herbs in the herbal formula used for tinnitus, which is Chinese bitters, Donggui, and Romania. Those are three herbs that you can start experimenting with. All right, getting to our second question. This question reads, is there anything that can help to repair nerve damage in the brain caused by a virus? So there's definitely a couple of things that I could think of that could help possibly repair nerve ending and brain tissue from any sort of damage, whether that's induced by a virus, like a traumatic brain injury or just stress in general, because ultimately these things are having a very similar effect. Whatever the stress or injury is, again, whether that's induced by a pathogen or something physical or a chemical stressor, at the end of the day, no matter what the stressor is, again, be it a pathogen or a virus, a physical injury or trauma or stress or a chemical, biochemical or biological stressor, when the brain starts to have issues of degeneration, it's because it has less energy to produce new nerves, new brain tissue, and the rate of degeneration is far exceeding the rate of regeneration. So in other words, look at it like every day you get $5, but you spend 10. That's gonna to lead to a deficiency. So the real secret to brain regeneration is to make sure that your brain has enough energy to where the regeneration of the brain far exceeds the degeneration of the brain. So the brain is building back up and rejuvenating at a faster rate than it's breaking down. That's really what aging is in the most basic sense, is when the body is in a greater catabolistic or breaking down degenerative state than it is in an anabolic rebuilding state. So if you haven't yet, we have a really great video right here that talks about brain regeneration, it has some fantastic tips and explains the pathogenesis of brain degeneration and regeneration in greater detail. But otherwise, some simple things to understand about the brain is that first and foremost, the brain is incredibly damaged by stress. Cortisol literally breaks down and wastes your brain. So I was just talking about this with tinnitus. One of the first things that cortisol starts to waste when you're really stressed out is the glands in your body that make up the immune system, your skin tissue, and then it starts to go to the brain and it can break down the brain and catabolize the brain tissue. However, in a healthy brain, the brain has an incredibly high concentration of the protective hormone progesterone. And this is an anti-stress hormone that opposes cortisol. So oftentimes if there's a progesterone deficiency, this will increase the activity of cortisol leading to the degeneration or the catabolism of the brain. So ensuring optimal levels of progesterone is essential for a youthful and healthy brain that is, again, regenerating at a faster rate than it's degenerating. So another really helpful video probably for you to watch would be the video that we have on progesterone and how to optimize progesterone levels because once the brain is deficient in progesterone, it's incredibly more susceptible to any sort of degeneration and damage caused by stress. So optimizing your progesterone levels will not only ensure that your brain is protected against stress, but progesterone has a positive effect on the metabolism 
putting the metabolism in a more regenerative state than it is a deficient state. Other than that, simple things like niacinamide or vitamin B3, which is a substrate of niacin, has actually been shown in study to be an incredibly powerful neuroprotectant. And it's incredibly useful actually for treating like traumatic brain injuries. So let's say you like got in a car accident and you hit your head or something and you fell down and that's a stress too. It's a different sort of stress, but again, remember, whether it's a traumatic physical stress or a virus, ultimately the brain is becoming stressed, damaged, and breaking down. So niacinamide has been shown again in study to actually act as a neuroprotectant and promote brain regeneration in people that have traumatic brain injuries and stressors. So if it's helpful for that, I imagine the mechanisms in general would be helpful for brain damage or nerve damage caused by a virus. So in general, anything that's gonna be a regenerative substance for the brain should be helpful in this case. Other things that are really helpful for increasing the regenerative abilities or capacities of the brain is actually just caffeine. So coffee is really great for the brain. And then also in the world of herbs or Chinese medicine, Lion's Mane, if you're not familiar, is an incredible brain tonic. So Lion's Mane in study has been proven to promote a process called melanation, which is the process of the brain increasing the production of new brain neurons and ensuring that brain neurons are healthy and functioning normally. And it also has been proven to stimulate the production of a compound known as nerve growth factor, which is ultimately a precursor to the growth and genesis of brain nerves and neurons. So it literally doesn't get any better than that in regards to your question on the regeneration of brain nerves because Lion's Mane does exactly that and has been proven to do that. So if you don't know about Lion's Mane, definitely look into it. I'll link some of the studies below so you can learn about it yourself and start supplementing with that regularly and then just give it time. Again, as long as you removed the underlying virus and the other factors that could be impairing your brain's ability to regenerate. So anything stress related will impair the energy supply to the brain which would make the brain less capable of producing new brain tissue, new neurons, etc. So as long as you remove the cause and you're keeping stress at a minimum, remember brain health, although we can talk about the intricate details of everything and it's fun, ultimately everything's connected. So any sort of stress is gonna negatively affect the brain. So just again, living a moderately healthy lifestyle overall is gonna be essential part of the brain regenerative program but I think most importantly is you remove the underlying cause, whatever caused the virus or the viral infection, hopefully you figured that thing out and handle it. And then from that point, again, optimizing the progesterone levels, supplementing with niacinamide and taking caffeine or ideally in coffee in like a whole food form, treating it like an herb or a food. And then again, you can also look into supplementing with lion's mane. All those things should be very beneficial and give you a pretty decent protocol. All right, getting to our third and final question for the day. This one reads, any tips or herbs for cleansing PUFA out of your blood when you've been consuming it for many years? So for those of you that do not know, PUFA is an acronym for polyunsaturated fatty acids. So I talk about these a lot because these are really the main culprit, the, the truly toxic substance in our modern food. The one thing that all like dietary dogmas could likely agree on but never do because they're always too busy pointing the finger at animal products or at sugar or at carbs or protein or saturated fats. And they're never really looking at the specific, very fine details of these particular fatty acids and how they are truly the toxic substance in our food today. And just as an example to drive the point home, the polyunsaturated fats are largely and most abundantly found in all the foods produced by Monsanto. So it's like corn oil, corn in general, soybean and soybean oil, safflower, sunflower, canola oil. It's all these very rancid, volatile, industrial, man-made oils. And the basic reason that these things are so toxic for you and not even getting into the many negative side effects associated with things like Roundup is that the polyunsaturated fats, chemically speaking, are incredibly volatile and damaging. So they have a very sensitive chemical structure. The smallest amount of light, heat, or air can cause these oils to become rancid and oxidized. So then when you go to consume them, they're usually already oxidized or on their way. So it's like consuming liquid oxidative stress in a sense, incredibly toxic. There's tons of known toxic side effects from them. And the basic reason they're so toxic in your body, other than being completely unnatural and a non-biocompatible match for the human body, is that they actually impair your cell's ability 
to uptake thyroid hormone in a lot of very essential things like glucose and oxygen. So they sort of suffocate your cells and impair your cells' ability to uptake that oxygen, amongst many other things. So in a word, they're anti-metabolic. They are not necessarily capable of being metabolized in the body, which causes them to instantly store as fat and ultimately be perceived as a toxin to the body. So typically when you consume a polyunsaturated fat, it just stores right as fat tissue. It's not utilized for energy efficiently in any way at all. And as I just rambled on, it opposes efficient energy production in all the most fundamental ways. So that's a couple of the major reasons that they're so toxic. I could go on and on, on associate them probably with every degenerative issue you could think of. But answering your question, you don't necessarily have to do anything to assist your body in getting rid of them. If you just simply come off of them, think of the word detox. D, like descend, means to come down or come off. Tox refers to toxin. So the word detox literally just means to come off of the toxin. You don't got to do anything to assist the process. As long as you're supplying your liver, the detoxification organ, with the adequate protein and sugars it needs to produce energy. If your liver doesn't have adequate protein and sugar, it will become impaired and not be able to detoxify efficiently. This is what's problematic with a lot of cleanses and even fasting for detoxification actually has the opposite effect. Once you start fasting, for the first maybe 12 or 24 hours, if you're healthy, it could have some sort of beneficial effect maybe, but it's ultimately gonna still slow your thyroid function down and all the first 12, 24 hour experiences on a fast are usually very negative, low blood sugar, low energy, cranky, anxiety, depression, anger. So even that I wouldn't say is necessarily beneficial because without the adequate protein and sugar, your liver can't detoxify. And a fast is depriving you of the basic energy that your liver would need to detoxify. So what you're gonna to wanna to do Although the whole detox movement has made people think otherwise, you don't want to starve yourself. You actually, you don't even want to fast necessarily. You want to supply your liver with the substrates it needs to detoxify. Without energy, the liver won't detoxify. It will slow down. The digestive processes slow down, which is actually classic proof that the fast slows the detoxification abilities. Because on a fast, your digestion slows down. If your digestion is slowing down, you know your detoxification system is slowing down because they're connected directly. So you don't want to eat less or try to starve yourself. You don't need to do anything other than supply the liver with adequate glucose and protein so it can detoxify and perform phases one and two liver detoxification. You need those proteins to do it. So make sure you're eating a moderate amount of protein every day and not going on those low carb diets so your liver can perform phases one and two liver detoxification. So it's the liver that's ultimately gonna metabolize and solubilize those unsaturated fatty acids to be excreted from the body. So you wanna make sure your liver is healthy if you're trying to detox anything. But before that, you just come off of it. If you come off of the polyunsaturated fats, over time, your body will just start to eliminate them. So the important thing is that you're just avoiding their consumption as best as you possibly can. You might not be able to do it entirely, but you could get to a point where you're consuming a very, very small percentage of them. And if you're replacing the unsaturated fats with the healthy, protective, chemically stable saturated fats, which optimize thyroid function, which boost the metabolic rate, which do not oxidize easily at all and are very protective and have anti-stress effects, then over time, your fat composition of your body will just become replaced with this protective saturated fats. So to answer your question in a few words, just avoid their consumption. Make sure your diet is rich of saturated fats to displace them and take care of your liver so it can detoxify any of the toxic estrogenic effects of them and eliminate from the body. And again, just over time, if you're consuming more saturated fat and deficient in the unsaturates, then over time your body composition is just gonna change slowly. But the key is slow. If you go too fast, if you start fasting and going on a calorie deficit, you'll lose weight too fast. And this can have very negative implications because if you start storing up all these polyunsaturated fatty acids that are stored, all this fat tissue that's unsaturated, it'll start circulating through your bloodstream, stimulating a stress response. So you wanna go slow. So come off of them, eat more saturated protective fats, take care of your liver and your body will do the rest. That brings this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday to a close. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. 
Now remember, if you're interested in winning some free herbs or mushrooms, all you need to do to be entered to win is make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, you have given this video a thumbs up, and that you have left a comment or question in the comment section below. Also remember, if I mentioned any sort of herbs or studies throughout this video, I've linked all that stuff in the description box below, along with links to our blog, our tonic herb shop, and our online wellness academy. Thanks so much for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.